Hi guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Second Sector. Today we're going to be talking about the Australian Grand Prix. That is right, F1 is back on our screens. It seems like a lifetime the off-season has been going on for, but finally it's back and today I'm going to round up the Australian Grand Prix for 2017. Friday practice happened and Lewis Hamilton topped the timesheets on both sessions and everybody thought, here we go again, another Mercedes dominated season and no one wanted that, but that wasn't the case come FP3 where Vettel was top of the timesheets and everybody was back on that Ferrari hype train like, they've got a race pace, they're coming for your Mercedes. Qualifying happened and I was very excited for qualifying because it's where you really see the team's true pace and I was all hoping for a crazy grid, nothing like last year but unfortunately that wasn't the case and Hamilton took pole. Um, we had Vettel second and behind him was Bottas and then Raikkonen so the Ferraris have managed to split the Mercedes team which is great, perfect but we've seen that before and it's nothing new so I wasn't that excited. Um, it was a bad session for a few people. Um, Nico Hulkenberg was three seconds faster than his new teammate Julian Palmer. That was quite embarrassing for him. Um, the homeboy hero Daniel Ricciardo, he binned it in P um, qualifying, uh, the third session of qualifying. That wasn't good for him. There were a few sad faces in the crowd. But our top three were Hamilton, Vettel and Bottas. Everyone expected the Mercedes in there, but I wasn't too sure if Vettel was going to split the two or not, which he did, and I'm happy for her as well. Come race day, and the bad luck is still there for our homeboy hero, Danny Ricciardo. He was making it to the grid when his car started to break down, which is never good before you start a Formula 1 race, especially for the new season, especially at your home Grand Prix. Anyway, so they got him into the pits, um, the grid realigned and he had to start from the pits if they could get the car moving. Two laps into the race, the car's moving, Christian Horner turns to Danny and just says, go and have some fun, go out there, treat this as a test session. So unfortunately, Danny Ricciardo didn't have the race he wanted. It probably got worse for him when the car broke down 30 laps into his Grand Prix, but that's Danny. We had some good midfield action with quite a few retirements, uh, a few crashes as well, crash at the beginning with Magnussen. Um, one of the highlights for me was seeing um, Ocon, uh, Alonso uh, and Hulkenberg, I believe, batting it out in one of the middle sectors. Fantastic. Um, unfortunately, Alonso was looking good. He was in 10th and he could have got a surprise point from McLaren, but unfortunately he was overtaken by both Ocon and Hulkenberg and then his car had some sort of suspension failure and he was put into the pits and had to retire. The real headline story from Sunday had to be Ferrari's pace. They showed real race pace and I mean to the point that they threatened Mercedes. Hamilton was out there, Vettel behind, Mercedes could see that Vettel was gaining, he was catching. What do they do? They make a call and they bring Hamilton into the pits because they don't want to be overtaken on track. I can understand what they're doing, they're trying to force Ferrari's hand to then pit afterwards, therefore leaving Hamilton in the lead, Vettel just behind. But it didn't work to plan. And do you know what? I kind of wish Mercedes just let Hamilton battle out with Vettel. I know it's good for the fans to see that sort of stuff, but Mercedes, they're thinking from a winning perspective. So they just brought Hamilton into the pits, changed his tyres, Vettel's now leading the Grand Prix. Hamilton comes out 1.7 seconds behind Verstappen. And he needs to pass Verstappen because it's race crucial, as Mercedes put it. He was unable to pass because Verstappen is a crazy, mad, amazing racer. He kept Hamilton behind him for four laps to the point where Hamilton even said over the radio, I don't know how you expect me to pass Verstappen. Those four laps were crucial because when Verstappen went into pit, Vettel was so far down the road, he was six seconds ahead when he came out of his pit stop anyway, so he was still clear at the lead. Vettel did get down the road, and when he got down the road, Mercedes ended up turning Hamilton's engine down, which allowed Bottas to catch up as well. 
And with Vettel so far down the road, that is how the race finished. P1 to Sebastian Vettel, P2 to Lewis Hamilton, and P3 to Valtteri Bottas. Good for Bottas getting a podium on his first race with his new team. But he's in one of the best cars, so you expect him to get a podium anyway. I say one of the best, it might not be the best this year. We'll have to find out how well the Ferrari are. And you know what? Ferrari needed that win. They've not had a win since 2015, Singapore. Um, they've had less wins than McLaren since 2011. So they really needed this win. Do you know what? The fans needed this win. For, they needed someone different than Mercedes to win. And I'm chuffed to bits for them. I'm really hoping this is the season where they can bring the fight to Mercedes and we've got a battle every single race as a different winner. That for me would be the perfect season. Um, the regulations on telly, they look fantastic. The wider tyres, the wider wings. Will we see more overtaking? I'm not too convinced. Neither is Lewis Hamilton, neither is Max Verstappen, who have both spoken out and said, we're not sure these regulations are good for overtaking. But in terms of the whole spectacle, I like it. It looks good. Uh, let me know your comments, guys, on the Australian Grand Prix. Put them in the boxes below. Give me a like, subscribe. I've been Sam, and you've been watching Second Sector.